Happy Friday, everybody. It is Friday. We made it almost to the end of the week. However, it's Friday the 13th. Take with that what you will. This is Wake Up on Angie Valley. Thanks for starting your day with us here on the NCB Live channel. I'm Dan Coons, your host. Be hanging around for the next hour or so. You'll notice that we have two chairs to my left, and that means we have two guests. Our friends from the Hospitality Ministries, Paul Hughes and Tia Roundy, will be joining us in the second half of the show. It'll be a fascinating conversation regarding this little letter. Stay close for that story. You're going to find it very fascinating. And all things Hospitality Ministries coming up in the second half of the show. You notice News Director Steve Hare is not in studio. Steve is on assignment. He will be off uh, today, and he'll be off on Monday. He'll return on Tuesday the 17th here to wake up Wenatchee Valley. So Grant Olson will be handling the news here in just a couple of minutes. we got a lot of sports to get to, including all the results from uh, prep action last night. We'll preview the weekend in the world of prep uh, sports. Also, we have college football. Seahawks are off this weekend, so you know they're not going to lose. We like that. We have uh, today in history. We have your birthdays. We have your obscure holiday and a whole bunch more on this Friday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. We are live from Studio 3 here in downtown Wenatchee, and we have another morning of spectacular footage, courtesy of Local Tell's Sky-Fi High-Speed Wireless Network. That is, of course, the Wenatchee Valley. We always begin with the cross camera. We have two of these. Uh, that is that right next to the cross proper at the very tip of Wenatchee Heights, pulled back quite a bit. We also have one that's about 400 feet to the east of that, which also gives us a pretty spectacular view. It's a little bit lower and it shows a little bit more of East Wenatchee, but that's our regular camera and you can see the clouds. It's going to be cool and wet, by the way, today and very chilly tonight. Forecast details are coming up, but we do have a warm and dry trend coming up for the weekend. Uh, camera number two, I believe, is the Waterville camera and it's pointing uh, not towards Wenatchee as it normally is, but up the other direction. That's the Columbia River, of course in the middle of your screen, the lifeblood of North Central Washington. That's up there a ways, of course. That's about uh, 4,000 feet in elevation. Speaking of high elevation, let's go to number three. That, believe it or not, is Billy Goat Mountain. We did this camera yesterday. Normally, if there were no clouds and no fog, what you'd see in the middle of your camera is Pateras and the Methow River flowing into the Columbia River. And you can see Brewster all the way in the background. You can't see any of that today. It's not a spectacular view. That's at the very top of Billy Goat Mountain. Uh, where, uh, again, Pateras would normally be in the middle of your screen. That is just incredible. All of these towers, of course, have to be in high elevation for the Sky-Fi uh, Internet uh, to work. So that's why all of these cameras are so high up in the air and so spectacular. Camera 4, as we wrap up our tour, is downtown Wenatchee proper, looking to the south. And, of course, you can see Wenatchee Heights, and you can almost, if you squint, you can see the camera near the cross. So we kind of come full circle here on this Friday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley with those incredible cameras uh, from Local Tel SkyFi High Speed Wireless Network. Your weather forecast is a bit iffy today, but a good looking weekend from the National Weather Service. This is what we're looking at. Cool and a little wet today. By the way, yesterday's high, only 48 degrees. That's all we got to on Thursday. That's 15 degrees below normal. If you park your car outside, by the way, you will notice once again today you will be warming up your car because your windshields will be fogged over. Tonight's overnight low, 33 degrees. It's been a long time since we had overnight lows near the freezing mark in many locations, Plain, the Lake Wenatchee, the Waterville Plateau, <coughs> and a few other uh, locations. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to be below freezing. Plains going to see temperatures in the lower 20s for the overnight low tonight. But then look at Saturday. Lots of sunshine, still below normal temperature with a high of 57. Sunday sunshine in 62 degrees. Monday looks good as well. Uh, and then more wet weather comes our way on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. In fact, quite a bit of rain is in the forecast, especially on Wednesday of next week. But that's down the road. For today, some light showers off and on. We're going to start out with what we have now, which is fairly cloudy skies. But as Friday uh, increases, the sun will be out. And by the time the sun goes down, about 6 o'clock tonight, it'll be mostly sunny skies. So there is uh, your forecast. The big story there is those overnight lows. If you're going to go out and watch high school football tonight, and we encourage you to do so, it is going to be cold. Blankets. Long underwear, not a bad idea. It's going to be uh, for those high school football games. Uh, one more quick item before we uh, take a break and check in with the news on the pass report. A lot of people out and about today. It's hard to believe we're doing pass reports in the middle of October. Uh, there's quite a bit of snow right now at the summit of Stevens Pass, and traction tires are advised. It's snowing with snow and slush on the roadway. I-90 looks fine and blue it looks fine, but if you're taking Stevens, 
You're going to be dealing with a couple of inches of snow on the ground. The plows are out there working uh, as the day progresses. It's going to stay just about that same. It's going to snow off and on for most of the day at Stevens Pass. I-90 in Blewett, not bad at all. Five and a half minutes after the hour, we are live from Studio 4 here in downtown Wenatchee. Watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, your Friday morning news with Grant Olson is one minute, uh, one minute away. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Having a relationship with your pediatrician is so important. Feeling that sense of trust, that is priceless. I tell everybody about CBCH. I love it there. When I make an appointment, I don't have to take an entire day off. As a working mom, my life is really busy. Family time is everything. That's what we all work towards. And I feel like CBCH respects that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is State Representative Kerry Condotta inviting you to check out our newest show on the NCW Life channel. We call it the 12th District. Each week, we'll be taking an in-depth look at various political issues that affect our area, our state, and the world. We'll be featuring local and statewide experts on the subject matter at hand. Please join us weekly for the 12th District with yours truly, Kerry Condotta. Check your channel guide for times or go to ncwlife.com for details. And now it's time for your local news update with Steve Hare. Good Friday morning. I'm Grant Olson in for Steve Hare with your Wake Up Wenatchee Valley news update. Starting off this morning, we continue our look at area candidates as we highlight the two candidates for Eastmont School Board, John Brangwen and David People. John Brangwen has been an attorney for 20 years and co-founded the law firm Woods and Brangwen. Brangwen received a bachelor's degree in law and justice from Central Washington University and a doctorate from Gonzaga. Brangwen says the Eastmont School Board needs someone who will ask the tough questions and play devil's advocate, something he says is sorely missing on the current board. He also says he thinks the biggest challenge facing the Eastmont School Board is getting the most out of school funding and the most out of people. He says he would also decrease waste, both in finances and in resources. Back in August, Brangwen also added his name to the list of people who favor changing the name of Robert E. Lee Elementary School, saying the school name is inappropriate. David People is 48 years old and a 1988 graduate of Eastmont High School. He holds degrees from both Wenatchee Valley College and Washington State University and is a business owner in the tree fruit industry. People feels the biggest challenge facing the Eastmont School Board will be planning and building for the future increase in the number of students that will attend various schools in the district. People says the school district has done an excellent job in maximizing state funding for the remodel project currently underway and says a new elementary school will be needed in the future. Regarding the name change of Robert E. Lee Elementary School, People, who for the most part has remained neutral on the subject, says what goes on inside the school is more important than the name. Rivercom's Emergency 911 Call Center in Wenatchee faces a potential budget challenge as a result of a projected shortfall in state funding next year. Steve Hare reports. Rivercom's Board of Directors this week adopted the 2018 spending plan totaling $4.7 million. Now, a portion of that total is generated by a state telephone excise tax. Revenue from that fund is shared with Rivercom and 19 other counties that contract with the state. Rivercom manager Jim Fossey says in the past that revenue has amounted to about $300,000 for the local budget. So we were made aware of it. What we don't have is specific dollar amounts at this point. We're hoping that uh, beginning Monday of next week, we will know actual numbers that the state office is wants um, to pass on to contract counties, and then we'll be tasked with making a recommendation of how to bridge that gap. Um, <clears throat> but we sat down internally with our budget and identified some areas where we can realize cost savings both for this year in in the balance of 2017 and going into 2018 for our budget for next year. Situated on the third floor of the Wenatchee Police Station, Rivercom serves as the emergency 911 communications hub, serving Chelan and Douglas County Fire, law enforcement and ambulance services. Steve Hare, NCW Life News. Fast food chain Arby's is living up to its 
We have the meat slogan with its nationwide debut of the venison sandwich. USA Today reports the sandwich will be featured in 3,300 restaurants and features thick-cut venison steak with crispy onions and a berry sauce on a toasted roll. It will only be available while supplies last. Arby's will also begin selling a limited-edition elk sandwich in three restaurants in Montana, Colorado, and Wyoming. And that's a look at news. I'm Grant Olson in for Steve Hare. Have a great Friday, and I hope to catch you a little bit later on today for the NCW Life Evening News. Have a great day. Hey, this is Justin at Club Crow Bar and Grill reminding you it's your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. We are your one-stop bar and grill, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Jam sessions and live bands playing a wide range of music. If pool tables or pull tabs are more your thing, we have you covered. Enjoy the fun and food at Club Crow Bar and Grill in Kashmir. Stop on by today. This is the NCW Life Community Calendar brought to you by First Choice Collision Center. The Oktoberfest 10-mile and 5-mile trail runs plus a kids race happens Saturday, October 14. This event is held on Wenatchee National Forest Lands near Leavenworth with the start and finish occurring at the community's historic ski hill facility. Registration is open until October 13. For more information and other community events, visit ncwlife.com. Twelve minutes after the hour here on this Friday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. I am Dan Koontz. We are broadcasting live from Studio 9 in downtown Wenatchee. And don't forget, second half of the show, Paul Hughes and uh, Tia from the uh, Hospitality Ministries will be joining me. Don't uh, you want to stay close for that conversation. It's going to be a good one. All right, Sparts to the Les, Les Schwab prep scoreboard from last night. Uh, in soccer, Wenatchee, shut out Davis, 3 to nothing For the Wenatchee Panthers, that is 10 wins in a row. Allie Flynn led the way, scored two of Wenatchee's three goals. Wenatchee undefeated in league. Cascade knocked off Kashmir 4-2, so the Kodiaks are the champions of the Caribou Trail League with three second-half goals. They are 12-0 on the year, Cascade is. And no score. Nobody could put the, uh, the that is actually the final score. It's not like we don't have a score. Nobody scored between Chelan and Quincy, but trust me, they did play on the pitch. Les Schwab volleyball scoreboard. From last night, the Davis Pirates bus was delayed an hour and a half. There was an accident on I-90 near the Vantage Bridge last night on their way to Wenatchee, so the game was delayed quite some time, but they eventually got it going as the Big Nine varsity tilt began. Davis showed no signs of bus fatigue. They pushed Wenatchee to the limit in Game 1. Everett Granstrom and Leanne Brandon were courtside. Whether we have those highlights or not, I'm not sure. We do not have the highlights, I'm being told now. Oh, hold tight. We do have the highlights. It's just our... Uh, our, our Stacy, our little uh, TriCaster, <laughs> misbehaving again this morning. Okay, here you go. Here are your highlights from last night's Wenatchee Davis volleyball match. Return here, Benitez up front. They'll just get it over. Live to see another volley, possibly, and a block at the net on the shot by Holberg. Now they get it over, try to find a hole in the ball, can't do it. Now the set, a little off kilter, but they get it over. Does Davis up front to Sug. Here's Hallberg again, cross court, and there is Davis on the return. Quite a volley on this point. There's Lickett off the chest, falling down. Davis gets it over again. Panthers on the return. Here comes a little soft touch by Hallberg this time. Took something off of that one. Back corner, it goes. It's out. Let's try to stay alive here. Back line to Tyre. Now up front, Hallberg with the kill and the points, and the first set goes to Wenatchee. And that's why I thought after they lost the first set, I wondered how the second would go here for Davis. Gosh, they've had a couple of near nasty collisions here. Sug off to Licken. Licken, I think it went off a shoulder. It was touch. Yes, yeah, touch. Yep, and that's a point to Wenatchee, and the set to Wenatchee. Back line, Osborne, sets, Clark. Rejection, out of bounds, point to Wenatchee, and the game to Wenatchee. 25-16, the final. Yes, the Panthers sweep the Davis Pirates. They are now 7-2 in Big Nine play. Also, last night, here are your finals from the volleyball action. Chelan went on the road to down Zilla. 
Three nothing, Annie Ann over Riverside Christian and Tenasca, no problem dispatching Waterville Mansfield. Also on the Les Schwab prep scoreboard yesterday, swimming and diving, Wenatchee rolls right along. No problems with Moses Lake. Eastmont uh, defeated West Valley in swimming and diving competition. Moses Lake comes into Wenatchee and they handed the Panthers their first losses of the season. They swept a doubleheader, 16-5 and 5-3. Wenatchee, however, still leads the league with four games to go. Now, prep football. It is Friday, of course, and we have right here on the NCW Life Channel Live with Grant Olson and Jay Seaback. Eisenhower is at Eastmont. This is Eastmont's final home game of the 2017 campaign. It is senior night, so if you haven't had a chance to check out the Wildcats in person, uh, tonight's your last night. You can go to Wildcat Stadium in East Wenatchee, or you can watch the game. We'll take to the air about 6.50, kickoff at 7 o'clock live right here on the NCW Life Channel. Wenatchee is on the road to take on Davis. It is the Pear Bowl. It is Cashmere at Cascade. That'll be great. Uh, OMAC is at Chelan. Odessa will take on Antiat, and Liberty Bell will be at Waterville Mansfield. This is, by the way, homecoming for the Shockers tonight. Also on the schedule for today, Wenatchee is hosting the 11 dive meet at the high school today. That begins at 4 o'clock in cross country running. Big meet today in Oroville. That gets underway at 4 o'clock. Now, that's today. Let's talk tomorrow. Wenatchee can just about wrap up the Big Nine title in soccer with a win at West Valley. It's at 2 o'clock on Saturday. In volleyball, Wenatchee will host Southridge, Sela, Othello, Oak Harbor, Grandview, East Valley, Davis, and Richland. It's the annual Wenatchee Invitational. It gets underway tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. That's awfully early to play volleyball. Uh, Cashmere is at Cascade in volleyball. Manson is at Soap Lake. Let's talk Wenatchee Wild. They have two games this weekend starting tonight. They're on the road. They're in West Kelowna. They'll take on the Warriors 7 o'clock tonight. Then they'll return home. they got a game tomorrow at the Town Toyota Center. Merritt will be uh, the opponent, 7 o'clock at the Town Toyota Center. College football scoreboard. And, well, we don't have a scoreboard. Nobody's played yet. Uh, but the Cougars play tonight. Uh, they uh, are going to be traveling. They're in Berkeley right now. A 7.30 kickoff on ESPN as they take on the California Golden Bears. There is some air quality issues in Berkeley right now. It looks like the air quality is going to be good enough to actually play the game, but there is a scenario that they're working on in case the air quality is not up to par and they won't be able to play a football game tonight because of all the wildfires in Central California. Tomorrow, Central Washington, undefeated Central Washington, will take on Western Oregon. That's a 1 o'clock kickoff. Eastern Washington will host Montana State. Big Sky Football, 1 o'clock kickoff on the red carpet. And number five, Washington, a late game Saturday. They're down in the desert to take on Arizona State. Kickoff 745 on ESPN. Cub fans are happy. They're also breathing a sigh of relief. Chicago won a nutty game against Washington to advance to the National League Championship Series. The final was 9-8. to eight. Addison Russell had four RBIs. Wade Davis made a seven-out save. It lasted four hours and 15 minutes, but the Cubs end the Nationals' season. Game one, National League Championship Series, 5 o'clock Saturday in Los Angeles. The Dodgers and the Cubs. And, of course, the American League Championship Series begins today in Houston. The New York Yankees will give the ball to Masahiro Tanaka. He'll take on the Astros' Dallas Kuchel. Game one, first pitch, 5 o'clock on FS1. Seahawks, as we mentioned at the top of the show, do not play this weekend, but the rest of the NFC West have games on Sunday. The 49ers are in Washington to take on the Redskins on Fox at 10 a.m. Arizona will host Tampa Bay. That's also on Fox. The Rams have an afternoon kickoff in Jacksonville, and Seattle will return to action next Sunday. They'll be in the Meadowlands to take on the Giants. And that is sports at 19 minutes after the hour. It is time for the obscure holiday of the day today. It is Friday the 13th, so today's holiday. It's not really a holiday, it's just a date, but it's a big date for a lot of people. It's Friday the 13th. If you are afraid of Friday the 13th, you suffer from tristakaikophobia. Tristakaikophobia is the fear of Friday the 13th. Uh, the superstitions behind Friday the 13th, I started to do a lot of research online and I started going, I don't believe any of this stuff. Uh, 13 is considered an unlucky number, quite frankly. Most buildings do not have a 13th floor. Uh, many people will not allow 13 people to sit at the table. If there's exactly 13 people at the table, they either add a 14th or they set up a second table. Uh, back in the old days, skippers would not go out to sea with a crew of 12, including the captain. That made 13 people. They wouldn't do that. They'd either add one more or throw somebody off the boat. Um, ironically enough, some of the most cultured people of all time back in the old days the ancient Mayans consider the number 13 lucky, sacred. It's Friday the 13th. Take with it what you will. I don't believe in any of that nonsense, by the way. 
20 minutes after the hour. Today in history, October 13th, 1775. Happy birthday to the Navy. Anchors away, my boys. The Continental Congress orders the establishment of the Continental Navy, which of course would eventually become the United States Navy. They didn't have any boats, they didn't have any ships. Basically, they started the Continental Navy and they grabbed about 60 good-sized boats and said they belong to us now. And the Continental Navy played a critical role in the Revolutionary War. And after the war was over and the United States didn't have any money, they just sold all the ships back off or gave them back to somebody and the Navy went away for a while. Then it came back as the United States Navy. But today is really the birthday of the United States Navy uh, on this date in 17. 75. 114 years ago today, October 13, 1903, that's an incredible photo, isn't it? The Boston Red Sox defeat the Pittsburgh Pirates to win the very first World Series. It was a best of nine affair back in those days, and the Red Sox won the final four games to win the World Series, the very first World Series in eight games. 114 years ago, remarkable. 46 years ago, on this date of 1971, game four of the 68th World Series between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Boston Orioles, the first ever World Series game played at night. Think about that. Every World Series game ever, from the very first one back in 1903 all the way to 1971, were day games, regardless of what day it was. That changed on this date 46 years ago, and ironically enough, it's now completely the opposite. The last time a World Series game was played during the day, was Game 6 of the 1987 World Series. It's been 30 years since the World Series played a game in the day. It's funny how that happens. And 34 years ago today, on this date of 1983, the Ameritech Mobile Communications Company launched the very first U.S. cellular network in Chicago, Illinois. Cellular networks existed before, mostly for law enforcement usages. It was kind of a private thing. It became a public thing on this date. Uh, 34 years ago, and now they're everywhere. Can you imagine this? This was a novelty. This was a novelty. Now it is, it's a necessity. It's funny how that happens. The very first cellular network went online on this date 34 years ago, and now it is an absolutely essential tool to everyday life. It's remarkable how that happened. 22 minutes after the hour. Birthdays for this October 13th. The Iron Lady, she was a chemist by profession, then she got into politics, and she was the longest serving British Prime Minister of the 20th century. Margaret Thatcher was born in this state in 1925, passed away at the age of 87 four years ago. She was the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from 1979 to 1990, and of course the very first woman Prime Minister in Great Britain history and changed uh, the course of history for our friends on the other side of the pond. Margaret Thatcher, born in the state of 1925. One of the greatest singer-songwriters this country has ever produced, Mr. Paul Simon is 76 years old today. Of course, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, twice over as a member of Simon and Garfunkel and as a solo artist back in 2001. 16 Grammy Awards. He has won three Grammys for the big prize, which is Album of the Year. And he has to be considered one of the top 10 songwriters of any genre ever in this country. Paul Simon is 76 years old today. Our junior senator, Maria Cantwell, celebrates a birthday. She is 59 years old today. She's currently serving in her third term in the Senate, and she is the most junior, she's the most senior junior senator, if that makes sense, because of course Patty Murray has been in office longer, so she is the most senior junior senator in the United States Senate. Maria Cantwell is 59 years old today. The greatest wide receiver in NFL history, period, perhaps the greatest football player ever. He's got a case for it. Jerry Rice is 55 years old today. Jerry Rice holds over 100 NFL records, by far the most of any player. It's not even close. Jerry Rice is 55 years old today, and one submitted from one of our viewers, Amy Hughes. Here's Amy. She's 29 years old today. Happy 29th birthday, Amy. And for those people who don't know, that's how it works. Get us your birthdays. We'll get your local celebrity's birthday on the air. Be more than happy to do it. That came via our Facebook page. So you can go to our Facebook page and just message us, private message us. We'll get it. We all get it. Uh, don't forget to put a little photo in there. We'll get your birthday on the air. Or if you want to, you can go to our website as well at ncwlife.com. You'll want to look for the icon uh, for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. You'll see me doing this. Um, if you click on the icon, the birthday club submission form pops up. You fill out the form, you attach the photo, and you get your birthday 
to us, and we'll get your birthday on the air here on the NCW Life Channel. 25 minutes after the hour, everyone is entitled to Mike McNaughty's opinion. The topic today, kids these days, this is darn kids. Mike will be talking about that. And then in the second half of the show, Paul Hughes and Tia Roundy of Hospitality Ministries will be in our studio. You're watching Wake Up. Look at that view from Pateras, so the Pateras camera. That is spectacular, unbelievable. Uh, you're watching Wake Up in Angie Valley, live on the NCW Live channel. We'll be right back. There's no substitute for the power of cable TV advertising. With Soli on Cable TV Advertising, you can reach your target audience right here in North Central Washington. We understand their viewing habits and can precisely target your customers on great cable networks like these. Call Soli on Broadcasting today and let us show you how to put your business message right in front of thousands of prospects at a very affordable price. Soli on Broadcasting, 509-888-2020. Antique Mall at Cashmere is Trade Dollar Coin's new location. Whether you're in search for coins, currency, gold, or silver, you'll find what you're looking for. From coin enthusiasts to avid collectors, find coins rarely seen from around the world. Whether you're buying or selling or need supplies, Trade Dollar Coins is the place to be. Located in Antique Mall at Cashmere. Open seven days a week. On the NCW Life Channel, your local TV station. This is TV. This is TV Set Free. TV Everywhere from Localtel sets you free to watch what you want, where you want. Catch your favorite networks, including live TV, ready to watch on any web-connected device for no extra charge. That's TV set free. Enjoy the extra value Localtel delivers with TV everywhere. Visit localtel.net and sign up today. Couldn't have made this problem, Zaga. My cylinder uber schwen, flute. Ich habe mein Fuken velour. Kind of Zorga. Global Car Care. We speak your car's language. Fraden Schlussen. Hey, you. Well, I got a leaky transmission. My head gasket's shot. And I could use some new brake pads. That dog don't hunt. Global Car Care. We speak your car or truck's language. If you are looking for dependable car service and repair, visit the good guys at Quick Lube and Tune. They've been keeping cars and trucks in the Wenatchee Valley running smooth for 35 years. Quick Lube and Tune is your hometown shop for a 10-minute oil change, complete tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, air conditioning service, and more. Get more life out of your vehicle by bringing it to the local guys you can trust at Quick Lube and Tune on South Wenatchee Avenue. Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody's entitled to my opinion. You know, I just read a friend's Facebook post asking if cliff notes were still a thing because he mentioned them to a younger person who didn't know what, what, what the person was talking about. Now, this made me think about how much other stuff I have mentioned to millennials that to their loss they've never heard of. For example, Sophia Loren. Oh, God. Aesop's Fables, The Leaning Tower of Pizza, believe it or not, Michelangelo's Statue of the Moses, David and others, Farrah Fawcett, Film the Wah, and of course, the two best car chase movies ever made, Bullet and the French Connection. Now, it reminds me of when my kids were younger and when I wanted to share a classic movie with them and they'd moan, oh no, Dad, this is black and white, we don't want to watch this. Now, it's painful thinking about all the stuff that our younger generation has missed out on. It's painful. Kids these days. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion.
This is the NCW Life Community Calendar brought to you by First Choice Collision Center. Mini Maker Fair is a gathering of fascinating, curious people of all ages who enjoy learning and sharing what they can do. From engineers to artists to scientists to crafters, Mini Maker Fair is a venue for these makers to show hobbies, experiments, and projects. Glimpse the future and get inspired October 21 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Wenatchee Convention Center. For more information, visit ncwlife.com. Hi, I'm Eric Grandstrom, host of Let's Learn here on the NCW Life channel, a program where we learn about different topics. And on this particular series, it's death and die. It's a conversation that no one wants to have, but we're going to have it right here on the NCW Life channel. So you're dead. Now what? We're going to learn all about the choices you have and the decisions you need to make. It's Let's Learn on the NCW Life channel. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest Craft Beers and 30 Chelan Valley Wines and Ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Welcome to NCW Life News, I'm Grant Olson. Of the NCW Life Legislative Hotline, I'm Steve Hare. I'm Eric Grandstrom with NCW Life Sports. And now, your weather forecast for North Central Washington. We're here at the downtown fire station right now. Dry and warm weather pattern for Friday. Considering that we're supposed to be 103 degrees today. How do you keep these guys cool? And this just in, traffic is slowed in the Arondo area as firefighters attack a brush fire. Right here on NCW Life News. It's 32 minutes after the hour on this 13th day of October, Friday the 13th. Ooh, I don't believe in any of that nonsense. Uh, my guest today, we have a fascinating story to tell, and we're also talking about the great works that Hospitality Ministries does. Uh, please welcome to this program, to my immediate left, is Paul Hughes. He's the executive director, and all the way at the corner is uh, Tia Roundy, who's the office manager and bookkeeper. And the first question people would go is, why is the bookkeeper here? Does that have to do with anything? <laughs> well, she knows something special. Yeah, <laughs> this is the story, and let me let me give you a brief uh, rundown of, of why we invited Paul here to begin with. It's a pretty interesting story, and I'll let Paul take it. Um, as you know, well know, local telecommunications purchased the federal building across the street from our studios a couple of months ago from the General Services Administration. Most people recognize it and remember it for 40 plus years. It was the post office here in the Wenatchee Valley. Well, they bought the building and the deal was closed and they were walking around and they're in that general area where the post office boxes used to be, uh, no longer there, and uh, Brenda Mandalis, uh, one of my favorite people, one of your favorite people, came across this. It was like tucked in the corner by the floor, it had been overlooked. Uh, it was completely sealed and it was made out, it is a self-addressed stamped envelope, made out to the hospitality house. And it was postmarked June 3rd of 2002. It was kind of delivered to your post office box, Paul. It almost got there. <laughs> it almost got there. So. Um, Brenda found this, and then in a totally unrelated, uh, well, you take it from there, Paul. Okay, well, um, I contacted uh, Brenda Medellis uh, a couple months ago. They've kindly agreed for this December to let us sell Christmas trees to support our ministry on the uh, parking lot side of the po old post office, and I had an appointment last week to meet with Brenda uh, to go actually look at the site, and I go in the door and hand her my business card. She says, wait a minute, stop. Oh, uh, I was wondering what I did wrong because mm -hmm. I do things wrong. <laughs> and uh, she said, well, I'll be right back. So she comes back with this envelope. She, she said, this is the hospitality house. And you guys run hospitality house. I said, yes. Well, we, I didn't know how to get it to where it was supposed to go, but this is a 15-year-old unopened envelope. So here you go. <laughs> And we did not open this until about 45 minutes ago um, when uh, Paul and Tia got here to the studio. This was still sealed. We had a general idea what was in it. Uh, Tia, you opened it uh, about 45 minutes ago. I did. And why don't you take it from there? Well, then it was really funny because Paul came back from his meeting and um, I had come in and he said, hey, do you 
happen to know this Elmer C. Jax? And I said, do they live on Kent Court? And he goes, yep. And I said, I totally know them. <laughs> I grew up with them. Um, so you've been the bookkeeper then for quite some time. Yeah, I've been a book, well, for two years. Okay, but so. you still knew them. Anyway. Yeah, no, so it was really cool. outside the ministry. Yeah, okay. outside the sure. ministry. Yep, I grew up with them. They went to the same church. And so we opened it up today. And we have a check. And also they sent us a little devotional. Very nice. So. Now, of course, the sad story is, number one, the check would be no good anyway, because right. the check is, is 15 years old. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Elmer, who went by the name Mike, has since Mike. passed mm -hmm. away. Yep, he passed away in 2008. And we reached out to uh, his widow, and uh, she have also, of course, Yeah, has, she has passed, passed away, away in 2012, yep. Um, but it's still a fascinating story. And I feel, uh, did Elmer ever get a hold of somebody who said, you know, I wrote you a check and, I, and I've been balancing my checkbook and nobody seems to have done anything with it? Unfortunately, I wasn't there at that right. time, so I honestly have no idea. I am assuming that uh -huh. he probably did because mm -hmm. he's just that kind of person. Well, his heart was so. in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was a $40 check. Yeah. That's, that's, that's good. That's good. Maybe I should just give you the 40 bucks now um, <laughs> to make up for that, plus interest, I suppose. Well, right? that would be important. That would be important. <laughs> Is this uh, something, how long have you been associated with, with uh I was on the, the board of directors for two years, and then I've been the executive director for the okay. last two years. Do you still do fundraising that way? That was a self-addressed stamped envelope. Right. So you we, had a mailing list. We, uh, we have a large mailing list. We send out a newsletter usually every uh, other month, and typically we'll include a, a blank envelope like this. And we get uh, close to half of our um, budget support from donations just like this. And I'm I'm one of those persons that if I if it's a if it's a good group of people who does good works like you people do, and you send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, at, you know that's half the battle right there. I mean, all I got to do is sit there and write a check and stick it right back in the envelope that you sent to me. It makes it makes it not a lot. Put on the stamp. Oh, you didn't put on the stamp? No. What was the stamp, by the way? How, what was the, was it probably 34 cents, I'm guessing, back then? Yep, it was 34, 34 cents. Yeah, and what's the stamp now? About $100? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 46. Close to it. I missed track. Um, talk about uh, your agency just in a, in a thumbnail idea. Give, us, okay. give folks an idea of what you do. Well, our hospitality ministries has been uh, around for over 30 years. Uh, we started with the men's shelter. Uh, we have a women's shelter, and uh, we operate Solomon's Porch downtown between the movie theaters for teens as a drop-in center. Is it, uh, is it busy this, with, with the teens? I mean, is it... Uh, you know, it, it really varies for the teens, and the need there is, like, uh, teens that don't seem to fit in in other places. Maybe there's difficulty in the family life, um, not getting along at school, or they're being bullied, so... It's really a safe place for junior high, high school age teens to drop in. Uh, it's adult supervised. It's open Monday through Saturday, four to eight. And we also provide a free six o'clock meal. So toward the end of the month, we get more teens because their families are running short on money and mm -hmm. hey, I've got a meal here. What about those who are just plain runaways that are just there? Uh, we would, if we know there's a runaway, we would want to uh, notify their parents or the right. authorities. We're not there to be secretive or hide anybody. It's just a safe place. It's a be. safe place. We have activities, and uh, once a week we offer a Bible study, but it's not required. Do you see the same kids on a regular basis? Is it almost um, like a second? We have uh, some kids are like that's where they go after school, and some kids it's hit and miss. Does the, is the location right in the heart of downtown uh, Wenatchee a critical part of Solomon's Porch instead of um, being way out in the end that, of town? Well, or? what works there is uh, we get kids from East Wenatchee and other places, so the, the bus system link, you know, they'll, they'll catch the trolley or somewhere and they'll come on in. And it's, how long has Solomon's Porch been around? Uh, I understand about 20 years. They asked, their ministry asked to join our ministry about four years ago. So there was obviously a need yeah. for it. Yeah. So Continuing. Continually. Um, let's get to your, well, actually, because you're here. I mean, you've done your duty. You've opened up the envelope. <laughs> so your involvement with, uh, with the ministry, how did, how did you get involved? How did you get to be the bookkeeper? Um, actually, I was looking for a job, and um, through my church, actually, uh, the family ministries pastor said, hey, they just got this email. Um, would you like to apply? And I said, hey, that sounds good. <laughs> so I called Paul up, and it worked out just perfect. Had an interview and started a couple days later, and met with that bookkeeper before they left. Is that what you've been doing? Your, so. Is that your professional life, is, is numbers? Is that what you... Um, 
Yeah, I like kids too. Yeah. Um, but a couple of years ago, my life changed, so I had to go back to work. So I've all been there. Just <laughs> I like numbers. Yeah. I so, like do you spend time at Solomon's Porch? Are you one of the supervisors? Actually, or? no, I'm not. Okay. That would be Robert Jackson. Okay. Is, and is Robert? Is that Robert's job? He's yeah, the one who's there all the time. There. If the doors are open, he's there, right? Correct. Well, almost always, yes. Okay. And so that's good because mm -hmm. he, he knows what to expect. But does, yes. he, does he also work with some some of the volunteers? Can do other people come in and help yes. them out? Yeah. For for instance, we have about half of the month we have people uh, uh, willing to commit monthly to provide the meal at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. So that's huge for us to have that support. And we're always open for more families or small groups or uh, we have uh, people from just work that know each other and they want to come and donate their time. For the teenagers, who, and it's specifically uh, centered around youth, and again, we're speaking of Solomon's Porch, do you have any idea for those kids who were there eating that free meal at six o'clock that that's, that's their meal of the day, that's what they're gonna eat, period? I don't know, the school district's pretty good about watching out for the lunches. Right. So, um, but it's a stable thing for them, like they can count on it. That's, and that's important. Yeah. And people can count on hospitality ministries, right? Yes, Yeah. for over 30 years. For over 30 years. How did you, I mean, you, this is not what you did for a living originally. No, you, no. you also have changed gears. Yeah, in so, 2010, I retired as a police officer for Wenatchee after 31 years. Mm -hmm. And So uh, unfortunately, you know Mike McNaughty quite well. I'm afraid I do. Okay, well, that's, <laughs> my, that's our approach. My sergeant. <laughs> oh, Mike was your boss? Oh, yeah. Oh, what was he like as a boss? Let's, take, let's get some dirt. He was similar to what you see now. <laughs> he hasn't changed much. Not has really. He? He's a he's a personality, isn't he? He is. He always is. was. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you were in law enforcement. Yeah. Your your entire career with the city of Wenatchee mm -hmm. Police Department. You retired, and then and you said, "I need to do something." Something. And now I've got this little forty-five, fifty-hour-a-week little position here, <laughs> so overseeing our men's shelter, which is Hospitality House, mm -hmm. and um, it's. The two-story large building in the gully across from Waste Transfer Station in the south end. And uh, we it's have... It's kind of hidden from it's view. It's kind of hidden, but once you find us, uh, we're, it's quite an operation. We have 52 men there as of yesterday. And uh, a two-story building, we have beds for about uh, 70. We currently have the 52, and we, we serve uh, three meals a day, not only to our residents, but to the public. So we serve... Uh, 100, 125 meals a, a day in September, uh, which was close to 3,750 meals just in September. Where does the food come from? Where does the money come from? How do you make that work? Well, it all works well because we have some great donors in the Valley. Uh, we have um, uh, Albertsons and Walmart and Costco that donate regularly to food that's not bad, but it's on the dating time. For, right, it's getting close to its And end of instead shelf life. of throwing it away, we have a driver that goes and collects, and I've collects seen it, him. and yep. it's what he does almost uh, seven days a week. And uh, other people bring in donations from their farms or orchards, and we always accept that at the men's shelter. We have a large um, uh, walk in freezer and cooler and dry storage, so we're able to accept a good amount of food. The physical location of the hospital, as we mentioned, is in that gully. In the gully. Uh, it doesn't give people a general idea of really how big that facility is. And, no. and um, it, it's a sizable building. It is, it? it is. And we can hold um, uh, probably 80 around the tables for a meal. The location works for you, but does the fact that it's buried in a gully, and unless you're looking for it, you drive right by it, does that, does that have negative connotations? Oh, I don't have to... La, 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 I don't have to deal with hospitality. Well, we have a nice houses. wooden sign out Yeah, you do, but you know, uh, understand what I'm saying. Well, the sure. I, you know, people um, choose to be interested in what they're interested in. And if they have a heart for volunteering or for helping out uh, the homeless, uh, we're available and they'll find us. You mentioned there's 52 now. Is okay. that high, low, about that, average? It's kind of average for right now. We, we'll probably get some more here with uh, colder weather coming in. What, what are the residents of Hospitality House um, responsible for? What do they have to do well, to earn their keep? Uh, both there and our women's shelter, we have a clean and sober uh, requirement to be a resident. So if they've made that step in their life, uh, we want to support that and help to keep them uh, sober and moving forward with their life. Uh, not everyone there comes with an addictive problem. Mm -hmm. They could have lost their job. There could be an illness. 
uh, divorce or some other reason why they have a bad streak in their life at that moment. And uh, so we help them with food and shelter. We have a men's, we get donated clothing and we keep uh, the men's clothing. We actually have a sort of a store and an outbuilding, but it's free. We give it away after the evening meal, Monday through Friday, uh, um, 6.30 to 7.15. And that, that clothing is available not only to our residents, but also to the public. So if someone needs to come in for clothes to get an interview, mm -hmm. we have some clothes for available. Uh, this might be an uncomfortable um, question for you to answer. I'm going to ask it anyway. Is the Wenatchee Valley becoming a haven for homeless people, homeless men? Does the word get out in the community, hey, if you come to Wenatchee, mm -hmm. you're in. You got food. You got shelter. You don't have to. Uh, address that, please. Well, I don't think we're being overrun. Uh, you look at Seattle's numbers, or even Spokane, and they're really struggling just to keep up with the vast numbers that have been drawn there. Uh, I think we're dealing well with um, the homeless population we have in the valley. Uh, another ministry, Lighthouse Ministries, is also doing a great job mm -hmm. in their effort as well. Um, I don't think um, what we've done is attracting people as much as they're coming for all kinds of reasons to the valley and we have a, a place to help them move forward in their life. And housing is such a huge issue for anybody. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it affects all walks of life here mm -hmm. in the Wenatchee Valley, as does, quite frankly, a, 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 a decent living wage can yeah. be hard to do nowadays. Some of the numbers that you read are, are shocking. I mean, some, there's a lot of people who, they have good, solid jobs, but they're one bad day away sure. from homelessness or bankruptcy. That's yeah. That would be me. <laughs> I'm just can in you, that, that, can in you that share, bracket. Are you comfortable yeah. sharing your story with us? Um, yeah. A couple of years ago, um, I ended up getting divorced and went from having no job to trying to find a job. It took me almost two years because it had been a while since I'd been working. Um, and then I landed a job here. And it's still, it's just day to day. If I have one thing happen, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. So, um, but yeah. So it's really, really hard. Did you, I work really, really hard. <laughs> yeah. Did you do any kind of job retraining? I mean, did you go and take a test? Okay, I haven't worked for so long. I don't know what I'm good at. Um, well, I had done some bookkeeping before, um, and then I also did child care for five years. Unfortunately, it's not a profession that you can actually, you know, do your whole, unfortunately, places like to work. They just can't afford to pay. Mm. Um, and so I went through WorkSource, and I had a little bit of unemployment, but that didn't last very long. So I was on TANF for a little bit. Um, and WorkSource was really, really helpful. They got me some classes and went through. And just getting back into it was really, really hard. My situation was kind of difficult because I didn't really fit into their normal brackets because um, I wasn't pregnant and I didn't do drugs. And so I, it's just this weird bracket that I kind of got, fell through That's, the cracks that in. That seems strange, doesn't it, it? It does. It seems really, really strange. A lot of them were like, I'm sorry, we can't help you until you're on the street. And I'm like, but I'm trying <laughs> not to get on the street. So that part was a little bit difficult. Um, but my family is all here, so I had a really, really good support. Um, I honestly, uh, kudos to those people that don't. I don't know how they do it because I had a hard enough time and I had support. So some of these women out there are just having a really hard time. How so. much? Uh, how, how, how much did uh, faith play a role in that? Your own personal faith. It it played a really, really big role. Maybe the most significant role, perhaps. Yeah. Yep. My you, faith kept me going. Uh, you mentioned briefly, let's get back to the women's shelter. We talked about oh, the sure. hospitality house uh, on the south end of town. There's a women's shelter as well, specifically. Yeah, we have a women's shelter in a residential part of Wenatchee, and we've had it running it for over 15 years. It's an older house built in 1912, three level, and uh, upper floor in the basement. We have um, kind of dorm style uh, living with bunk beds, uh, much like the men's shelter. and. Um, we have a full-time director there, and it's called Haven of Hope. Um, we have ladies there for all kinds of reasons, again, maybe addiction, maybe divorce, but we have a number of ladies there because of abuse. And uh, especially, I think, for them, that it does become a safe haven uh, for them uh, restarting their lives and uh, getting some support and uh, direction and some hope. Have you had to have difficult conversations with either um, uh, the, the women's shelter or the men's shelter about, okay, it's, you've been here for a long time, it's time to, time well, to move we, forward? Well, we have those conversations uh, regularly through case management. Uh -huh. So we uh, encourage 
um, planning, we encourage uh, people setting their own goals and then checking up, well, where are you with your own goals? Um, it works well and for some people and for others, you know, the motivation isn't always there. Uh, some people have uh, medical issues or on disability and so not only do they not have housing, they physically don't always have a way to get back into the workforce. So they're sometimes stuck. And even if they do get back in the workforce, it could, it's more often than not, it's probably not a livable wage. Yeah, it's, it's tough to do that. And then if you're in the valley and you're competing with people who are, have full-time jobs and, oh, you're coming from a homeless shelter, well, the landlord may take a second look at that. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to fill out a renter's application when you, your credit history doesn't exist. Correct. You know, that could be, that could be yeah. difficult. Paul Hughes and Tia Roundy are my guests today from Hospitality Ministries. We're going to take a quick break and more with these two really cool people <laughs> when we come back. You watch your makeup on Angie Valley on the NCW Life Channel. It's a spectacular good time all month long in Kashmir. Scarecrows will be waiting for you throughout the town. Silly ones, spooky ones, and everything in between. Yes, it's Scare Crazy in Kashmir. Bring the family and find the scarecrows all around Kashmir. And be sure to stop by these fine sponsors. The Antique Mall at Kashmir. Come find your treasure. And Club Crow Bar and Grill. Home of the blues, brews, and barbecue. <laughs> Join us for Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. This former police sergeant is plugged into not only the world of the streets, he's an actor and connoisseur of the arts. So join Mike and his guests for, well, Street Talk and Other Stuff. Mondays at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30. It's Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. Bay Equity Home Loans in Wenatchee, serving all of North Central Washington. We make it our priority to learn all about your financial needs. Whether you're buying your first home, refinancing, or want a reverse mortgage, our mortgage professionals are ready to guide you through the loan process. We have a wide variety of loan products to fit your family's needs. Call Bay Equity Home Loans of Wenatchee today for your free approval. 509-888-0466. Fifty-three minutes after the hour, we are live from Studio Two here in downtown Wenatchee on this Friday edition of Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan Coons, Paul Hughes, Tia Roundy. We're talking about uh, hospitality ministries in its thirtieth year now here. Uh, in actually, Valley. I think it's thirty-four. Thirty-four years yeah. uh, in Wenatchee Valley. Yeah. Thirty-five <laughs> years ago, what was a, a, a homeless man or woman to do then? Well, that's a great guys? question. Our founder, we um, call him Hutch, uh, just a layman who brought picked up a hitchhiker coming to visit family in Wenatchee, went and asked, well, so where do I drop him off at? The shelter was told there is no shelter. He took it upon himself, his You're own You're telling resources. me, excuse me, Paul, 35 yeah. years ago there was no shelter like this? No. no. I did not know that. You'd yeah. think there would be. Well, anyway. it starts at some point. Yeah. <laughs> and Hutch took it upon himself to, he found an old, rundown, vacant, um, almost condemnable hotel in the south end about four blocks further south than we are, and the building's no, no longer there. But um, he opened it up, hoped to be able to renovate it. I guess as soon as he opened it, people from you know the Riverbank and wherever just started coming in. He had families and tried to put the men upstairs, and uh, it had limited electricity, no running water. They had a porta potty on the front stoop, and they went by buckets to the gas station down the street to bring in the water. And now it's 35 years yeah, later, and you later. have a, a pretty nice facility. Yeah. Uh, do the residents there, are they self-policing? Do you have a lot of issues you have to do with uh, that, or are we, they pretty we, good? To they're pretty good. We uh, 
we actually operate a lot with our residents that we um, kind of have uh, seen their trustworthiness and, and then we have them as kind of in-house managers for us. Uh, we're able to pay them just a little bit of money and offsets uh, room and board for them, but we have managers that run the kitchen and, and housekeeping, uh, the yard work. Uh, the men's shelter is completely run by um, a wood stove that takes a year to collect and cut wood from the valley and then we run a wood stove all year long to heat a two-story building. The, uh, you're, uh, you're a 5013C, you're answerable to a board of directors, Paul, yes, you're the executive yeah. director, you handle day-to-day. -day. Talk about your board. Uh, we, Who's on it? How we, the... we just had uh, 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 our seventh board member left because of a, he wanted to get involved in a different ministry, uh, but we have, currently have six board members. Um, Most of them have come on in the last two or three years. It's good, fresh blood. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Sam Fletcher is our board president. He's been with the ministry for probably 20 years. And, um, uh, but we, we're responsible with them. We have a meeting once a month at least with the board members and they go through the finances and oversee, uh, make sure we're uh, on the up and up. Speaking of finances, Money, where does it come from? How do you get it? What are you doing to make ends meet? Yes. Well, about a third of our income comes from this kind of a letter that we already showed you that we received. So our donors uh, generously, many of them routinely, donate uh, different amounts of money, large and small, and that covers about less than a half of what we actually need to operate. Uh, it costs us 6000 to $7,000 a month just to operate our women's shelter. So we have the men's shelter and the Sullivan Sports Downtown too. Uh, we do fundraisers. We have several, one right now, we have a, a raffle. We have over 50 prizes, a lot of them small restaurants or, um, um, what we got? I don't remember. Oh, okay. Kurt's always adding well, to them, so I don't know. You can right. buy as many tickets yeah, as you yeah. want. Yeah, so it's a dollar a ticket and our, our grand prize is two nights at Sun Mountain Lodge. That's not too bad. We have a day long uh, limo ride. Limo ride. We have passes for us, um, uh, Mission Ridge and uh, the hockey, Wenatchee Wild Hockey. Well, kudos to all of those yes. businesses yes. for stepping up to the plate. A lot of them are, have supported yeah. us that way. That's great. Where, where can I get me a ticket? I want one right uh, now. Well, I left mine on my desk to sell okay. you, but we have them for sale at the men's shelter. At the men's shelter. And yeah. Because that, that's, that's, you know, you can't, you, can't, uh, you can't win unless you buy yeah. a and raffle and ticket. And we do have a Christmas uh, tree sale coming up first two weeks in December. At our former post office. Right, right across the, the street from our studio. Yep. So, and again, kudos to Local Tell for stepping up on that. Amen. And, and that's, that's basically, but your number one fundraiser is simply? Simply getting the word out and uh, people concerned and helpful. We get do people to donate their time, uh, different things. And uh, Thanksgiving coming up, we'll take volunteers to make sure that Thanksgiving Day meal is good for us. The... Uh, any little bit helps, doesn't it? It's amazing what sure. you can do. I know that check is no good. It's a wonderful story from Elmer. That, that $40, $40, which is what his check was for, that goes a long way it for does. you guys, doesn't it? It is. It's, uh, have you become experts at stretching those dollars? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lord willing. Lord willing. And t oh, speaking of the Lord, we'll close with that. This is a, this is a faith-based organization. It is. It is. Uh, we, have, we operate uh, with a Christian attitude toward our clients, toward our residents, we offer um, at the men's shelter uh, a church service every Sunday morning at 8. We do uh, volunteer or Bible studies at our facilities. They're all voluntary, so if someone chooses not to attend, that's okay. But we just encourage that, you know, maybe your life hasn't gone in the right direction in the past. Um, maybe consider um, finding the Lord in your life. We got about 30 seconds. Give me a hospitality ministry success story real quickly. Somebody who, who went through your system and made it. Um, uh, a man that was a young man, Hispanic gentleman, shot in Yakima because he was picking up a cell phone, came to us um, fairly disabled, back pain and other things. Um, he stayed with us for like, I think, six months. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I helped him get to his doctor appointments, but he finally got disability, got a vehicle, and is now on his own. Good. That's great news. Paul, thanks for dropping by.
You're welcome. I appreciate it. Thea, keep up the good work. Oh, thank you. Hospitality Ministries, Google them and donate and make sure they can uh, they continue to do the great work that they do. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.